Oh God.
As we continue our day of penance and prayer, offering up to the, for the reparation of our Lord's most sacred heart, we, in offering up this praise and worship, want to take a moment now to offer prayer as we will throughout this day. And right now, let us reflect on the litany of the sacred heart to be able to see how much love our Lord has had for us, the mercy he has had on us. And in this litany, ask continuing for God's mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mother, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, substantially united to the Word of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of infinite majesty, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, holy temple of God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of charity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, vessel of justice and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abyss of all virtues, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praises, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, King and center of all hearts, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom dwelleth all the fullness of divinity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father is well pleased, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of whose fullness we have all received, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and abounding in mercy, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, rich unto all who call upon thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, atonement for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, filled with reproaches, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our offenses, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, made obedient unto death, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, sour source of all consolation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who hope in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, Spare us, O Lord, Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord, 
Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, make and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, look upon the heart of thine most beloved Son, upon the praises and satisfaction he offers thee in the name of sinners, and appeased by worthy homage, pardon those who implore thy mercy in thy great goodness in the name of the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And before we return to our praise and worship, we want to thank the seminarians. We have Brother Justin, who is out front here, Brother Andrew and Brother Nicholas. You can't see them as they are hidden in the back. Maybe they'll be able to come forward, but we're grateful for that. But what we want to say now before we go back to the praise and worship is please share this with your friends. All the praise and worship and the prayers and the rosaries and the bread meditations we'll be doing right now are leading up to the three o'clock hour. Please, if you can't stay with us, try to at least come back during the 3 p.m. hour as we do a reconsecration to the Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart. This is very important because as we pray the chaplet um, at 3 o'clock, we want to have as many of you as possible join us. This is truly the hour of power, the hour that our Lord showers his mercy upon the earth. And so we ask that you try to get all friends and family together at three o'clock as Father Anthony will lead us in this consecration of our nation, all the peoples of the world that are so hurting right now, and that we can bring ourselves back to the sacred heart of Jesus. So please help us bring everyone to Christ as we lead up to the three o'clock hour. Hopefully you can stay with us for each of the hours. We'll continue. We're gonna be here every hour between now and then, but especially that hour, join us. But hopefully you can stay with us and make this time a time of beautiful renewal. Let us now offer our minds and our hearts to the sacred heart of Jesus through the beauty of the music. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this is hard to adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. 
here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me.
righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Teach my songs to rise to you. When ten temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand or fall Cause Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you Oh God, how I need
majesty all who are we come to come to the fountain dip your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow As deep cries out to deep, we sing, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus, come, come thirsty all who are weak come to the fountain dip your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the wave of his mercy as deep cries out to the deep, we sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come. It is a great privilege to be here at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy for this special day of prayer, the Global Rosary Relay Prayer for Priests, and here at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. It is a special place and privileged place to intercede before merciful Jesus who is here intercede for priests, but for all the people of the earth today. There's so many of us who are in need of, of God's love and mercy. And so I'd like to start here with honoring the Lord who's here with us. We may, may not know that Jesus, who is truly present in the most blessed sacrament, he's the one who gives us the power, he gives us the joy, he gives us the ability to share with him and share with one another 
that great message that the Father has given to him, that message of salvation. Without him, we're, we can't do anything. With him, we have the power, we have the ability. We have that energy and this great conviction of the heart to speak, to share, that in him we have salvation. We have in him is our hope of glory. So we honor you, Jesus, here. You're present with us. But also I'd like to just share a couple things about this, this whole message of revealed to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque with this message of the Sacred Heart. It is fascinating for, to, for me that on December 27th, 1673, the Feast of St. John the Evangelist, two months, two months after our religious congregation was formally approved by the bishop, the Lord Jesus appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque with a deeply consoling message. That message was given not only to her, but also to humanity. It was a message that reminded the people afflicted with spiritual sufferings and confusion, living with a great fear of eternal damnation, that the Lord's love for all people and his mercy for all knows no bounds. We know that 16th century Calvinism, 17th century Jansenism, preached the distorted form of Christianity and preached the fearful idea that the whole section of humanity was condemned to hell. And the church began to counter this movement, embraced by many, including some clergy as well, with its preaching of the infinite love of our Savior who died for us and for all people. And he died on a cross and his heart was open with a lance, thus pour, pouring forth his love and mercy from his heart and his streams of life-giving fountain of mercy was reaching out, moving into every human heart. Now, there are many saints in the history of the church, like St. Gertrude and others who drew, who drew generations of Christians to the heart of Christ, to adore his sacred wound, to find repose, to hear the beating heart of his love. Great theologians of the first half of the 17th century, such as Caspar Dusbicki and St. John Hughes, prepared the spiritual theology and liturgy, and liturgy prayers for the Sacred Heart devotion. But it wasn't until Jesus appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, a humble nun of the Visitation Sisters, the devotion began to quickly spread and the Feast of the Sacred Heart was instituted. This initiated among the faithful a powerful current of spiritual renewal that lasts until this very day. So it was on the Feast of St. John the Evangelist as Margaret Mary was contemplating that she would wish to experience something like St. John the Evangelist did. She wanted to experience just being being next to him with his head placed on his heart. And so she received this extraordinary grace from the Lord. And this is how she describes. She was adoring the Blessed Sacrament and her wish and desire was that she would experience him, that she would draw very close and near to him. And she says the following, I felt myself wholly penetrated with the divine presence, but to such a degree that I lost all thought of myself, of the place where I was, and abandoned myself to this divine spirit, yielding up my heart to the power of his love. He made me repose for a long time upon his sacred breast, where he disclosed to me the marvels of his love and the inexplicable secrets of his sacred heart. The Lord said to her, my divine heart, is so inflamed with love for people and for you in particular that being unable any longer to contain within itself the flames of its burning charity, is, it must needs spread them abroad by your means and manifest itself to them, to the whole mankind, in order to enrich them with the precious graces of sanctification and salvation necessary to withdraw them from the abyss of perdition. 
I have chosen you as an abyss of unworthiness for the accomplishment of this great design in order that everything may be done by me. Here the Lord explains to her why he appeared. I want to protect human beings from perdition. I want to save them. And so I have come to you because the love, the flames of my burning heart, of my burning love is so great for humanity that it wishes to be spread, to be received. And then again, St. Margaret Mary says on one occasion, while the blessed sacrament is exposed, feeling wholly withdrawn within myself by an extraordinary recollection of all my senses and powers, Jesus Christ, my sweet master, presented himself to me, all resplendent with glory, his five wounds shining like so many suns, flames issued from every part of his sacred humanity, especially from his adorable breast, which resembled an open furnace and disclosed to me his most loving and most amiable heart, which was the living source of these flames. It was then that he made known to me the ineffable marvels of his pure love and showed me to what an excess he had to what an excess he had loved men from whom he received only ingratitude and contempt. The Lord said, I feel this more than all that I suffered during my passion. If only they would make me would make me some return for my love. I should think but little of all I have done for them and would wish were it possible to suffer still more. But the sole return they make for all my eagerness to do them good is to reject is to reject me and treat me with coldness. Do you at least console me by supplying for their ingratitude as far as you're able to? Here we have, we have the Lord is asking her, but he's asking not only her, but also to us, what can we do for him? He wishes to give everything, but what does he ask for in, in return? For well, first of all, he says in the first place, I want you to receive me in the Holy Communion as often as obedience or your confessor or superiors allow or will permit you, despite the mortification and humiliation it may cause you, which you must receive as pledges of my love. We have to remember that at that time, even religious were not receiving the Eucharist every day. It is something that we have received from the church as a, as a special type of reminder, a gift at the beginning of 20th century, that we should receive them as often as we can daily. At that time, it was only on certain days, which were, and so the Lord is inviting you, come as often as you can, communicate with me, especially on the first Fridays of the month. And it is then that he instituted, as we know, the first nine Fridays, by which he promises that those who fulfill that wonderful um, gift from him by receiving him going to confession on first Fridays of the month as well receiving him in the Eucharist that he promises that we will not die without the, 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 the aid of grace. Um, so you will always be prepared for that. And I have to say that I remember this one gentleman, I was visiting my, my sister and this gentleman asked, um, uh, you know he was not doing well, and he said he said that uh, if your if your brother comes, could he come and visit me? And so I came to visit my sister, and and he um, he he was still fairly strong. He got up. He was in bed, but he got up. He made his confession. I brought him the Eucharist, and you know what? And two days later, he passed away. He was the one. He told me during that visit, he says, you know, I always prepare myself for First Fridays. I made the First Fridays, nine First Fridays, and see how the Lord prepared him, even though he wasn't expecting a priest to be around. But he says, if brother comes, and, and you know, he knew that I was coming. Sometimes people pass around, you know, they, they say, okay, Father Cass is coming there. And it was, uh, you know, and, and so, so this is what, what happened to me and to what happened to him. He was prepared to receive the, the Lord on the day he longed to receive him because he was in, in, a, in the habit of not only 
that he make the first nine First Fridays of the month, but also as much as he could, he was mindful of the First Fridays. So on First Friday, I will make you, I will make you share in my mortal sadness, which I was pleased to feel in the Garden of Olives. This is how the Lord spoke to Saint uh, Margaret Mary. And this sadness, without you being able to understand it, shall reduce you to a kind of agony harder to endure than death itself. He invited her to share in that anguish, in that suffering that he had to endure. But above all, what he wish, wishes from all of us is that we would um, share in that anguish, that we would uh, make up for that which, for all the sins, that human beings sometimes carelessly, sometimes without even reflection, commit. And we are to help him in, 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 the, in, that, in that making up for others. It, the Lord says to her, he says, um, and in order to bear me company in the humble prayer that I then offered to my father in the midst of my anguish, you shall rise between 11 p.m. and midnight and remain prostrate with me for an hour, not only to appease the divine anger by begging mercy for sinners, but also to mitigate in some way the bitterness which I felt at that time on finding my, uh, myself abandoned by my apostles, which obliged me to reproach them for not being able to watch even one hour with me. And here, I'd like to just, just share with you a statement which is so powerful but it speaks of that ingratitude we, which we are to help Jesus to console him and to you know, help him um, remove from our human, human family. Behold the heart which has so loved man that it has spared nothing, even to exhausting and consuming itself in order to testify, to testify in order to testify this love. And in return, I receive from the greater part of only ingratitude by their irreverence and sacrilege and by the coldness and contempt they have for me in the sacrament of love. But what I feel most keenly is that it, it is hearts which are consecrated to me that treat me thus. Therefore, I ask of you that the Friday after active of Corpus Christi be set apart for a special feast to honor my heart by communicating on that day and making reparation for it by, by a solemn act in order to make amends for the indignities which has received during the time it has exposed, in the time it has been exposed on the altars. I promise you that my heart shall expand itself to shed in abundance the influence of its divine love upon those who shall thus honor it and cause it to be honored. And that's why we gather here to make reparation on this feast of the Sacred Heart. We follow what the Lord asked us. We wish to do so not only for the intention of priests, which in a special way we do so today, but for all the intentions. You know, here at the National Shrine, what we have is we pray the Divina of Divine Mercy every day. We have started to pray this Novena already in 1941. We never missed a day. And, and even the time when it was, there was a ban, we continued to pray the intentions which the Lord offered. And each one of the intentions uh, which are prayed to the, sake, to, the, to, the, to the Divine Mercy is that the Lord says to us, bring to me the souls of those who are, you know, who do not believe in God, for the faithful ones, for souls of priests and religious, for those who promote my mercy, for those who have separated themselves from, from the Lord, for those who proclaim God's mercy, for those who are lukewarm, and you know, for, for those souls in purgatory, we have all those intentions, but in each one, the Lord says, bring into the abode of my compassionate sacred heart, bring into the abode the souls that are in need of my mercy. And, and so not only 
is this um, a special day in which we bring in a particular way and we pray for the souls of priests, for religious and others. But each day here at the shrine, we do so. And, and it is not just a, something that, that we take it for granted. No, we make sure that each group is prayed for. And then not only the intention, but we also pray the chaplet of divine mercy because it is through his suffering and death where we turn to the Father and ask for God's mercy. We turn to, to, to eternal Father because, because he has given us his son. And the Son is truly an expiation, propitiatory offering on behalf of us. He is the atoning sacrifice. And so when we ask the Father and, and place the various intentions we have, especially the various groups of people which constitute humanity, all of the humanity, because there's many who are, still are non-believers. There are those who are lukewarm. There are those who are in need of his mercy because they have separated themselves from God or from the church. We bring them and then pray that powerful prayer of the chaplet on behalf of those and those, those members of the humanity that are in particularly chosen by Jesus himself. So may we then today as we in a particular way pr pray such a beautiful, beautiful prayer and, and bring each portion of mankind to the sacred heart, that we may know that it is the Lord himself, not only that he initiated you know, the gift, this revelation of his sacred heart, but we know that he also continued with that revelation of God's love and, and his love which manifests itself in that human heart, tender heart. And he brought this, this sort of message to today, to the 20th century, whereby we honor the Lord himself, not only in the sacred heart, which manifests that love, tender love for humanity, but also we, we turn to Jesus, the mercy and love itself, and, and honor God for his mercy for all humanity. Because you know, sometimes we forget that there's no there's no division between the Father's will and Jesus' will for us, the Father's love and, and Jesus' love for us, or the Father's uh, gift of eternal destiny outside of Jesus himself, because it was Jesus himself who uh, was sent by the Father uh, on that mission. And what was that mission? Because God so loved the world that he sent his Son, mission of salvation, mission of glory. And here today, I'd like to pray one prayer, which is known as the prayer of confidence to the Sacred Heart. And if all of you who may be able to see those who are watching us on live streaming, you may be able to see it on your screen, join me in prayer this prayer. And, and after this prayer, uh, there's one more prayer I'd like to offer for you in a special way, which I will share with you immediately after this prayer of confidence. So let us pray together. Jesus, you have revealed to us in your heart the greatness of your love. And the first thing you expect of us is that we believe in your love. So we come to proclaim before you that we do believe in your love, that we place all our trust in your loving heart. I will invoke uh, the sacred heart of Jesus and the response will be we place our trust in you so I say sacred heart of Jesus we place our trust in you in all our trials and crosses we place our trust in you in dangers and difficulties we place our trust in you in doubts and anxieties we place our trust in you in failures and disappointments we place our trust in you. Whenever our prayers seem to be unanswered, we place our trust in you. When temptations are strongest, we place our trust in you. In spite of all our sins and evil habits, we place our trust in you. In sickness and suffering, we place our trust in you. At every moment of our life, we place our trust in you. At the hour of our death, we place our trust in you. Jesus, 
you showed us in your gospel, how delighted you were whenever you found confidence. We wish then to give this pleasure to your most sacred heart of placing all our confidence in you. We firmly believe that you love us and with an infinite love and that everything you may send us, chiefly if it be a cross, is really a sign of your love. We, don't, we do not rely on our own strength, our own virtues, but precisely because we are weak, because we are sinners, we trust in the love of your Son. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place our trust in you. There was a very, um, a very devout soul to whom the Lord wished to reveal his love, not only for her, but for her humanity. And, and she wanted to do something. You know, he revealed himself so that, that she may uh, more devoutly turn and aspire to love him more. And I'd like to just share one more prayer with you, which is very personal. Dear Lord Jesus, let us honor you more and more as we aspire to give ourselves completely to you in communion with Our Lady, your angels and saints, for you are our one certain desire dispel any darkness from our lives by the rays of your merciful love. Enlighten our conscience and lead us to the Father by the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. May our hearts never fail to adore you, yet burn with zeal for your kingdom amongst the eternal flame of your most sacred heart. For you are our one certain desire, the hope of all our days. It is this prayer of confidence, of placing ourselves, which the Lord desires from each one of us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to be close to him. You know, here we are before the Blessed Sacrament. We believe that he's here. We believe that he loves us. We believe that, that he want, wishes to give us everything the best. He be, wishes to give his very divinity to us. You know, how often the early church fathers, we heard this longing, this prayer. He says, Lord, divinize me, sanctify me, make me like yourself, make me beat with a heart that your heart beats. And you know, it is, it is before the Blessed Sacrament, it is before the Eucharist here, that not only Margaret Mary received so many extraordinary blessings and the vision and the gifts that she received, but also St. Faustina too, by meditating on his presence, by meditating on his, on his love for her, by his, by, on his presence. She also received these extraordinary blessings and it is countless souls that do so. You know, before the, before the Eucharist, we can do the holy hour, a holy hour of reparation for the sins of those who, who are not even aware that they're sinners. We, before the holy hour, we can draw near and we can begin to reflect more and more deeply and what he has done for us. It is love that the Lord did not limit himself to, to just, just being there. He offered himself as a sacrifice. He offered himself on a cross. He allowed himself to be tortured so that we may receive that mercy and forgiveness. He allowed himself to be crucified so that we may not suffer eternal damnation. And so here, before that Eucharist, may we make a special promise to the Lord, help us, Lord, to be with you. Help us that we may always know what to do and, and, and how to respond to you. And finally, as we know that the Lord Jesus promises for those who love him, for those who honor him, for those who have special devotion to him, to his heart, to, to their mercy, I will give them all the graces necessary in their state of life. I will establish peace in their homes. And we know that there's such a great need to, to have peace in the homes. People, many homes are divided, as we know. I will comfort them in all their afflictions. I will be their secure refuge during life and above all in death. 
I will bestow abundant blessings upon all their undertakings. Sinners will find in my heart the source, an infinite ocean of mercy. Lukewarm souls shall become fervent. Fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. I will bless every place in which the, an image of my heart is exposed and honored. I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. Those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart. And I promise, promise you, in the excessive mercy of my heart, that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who receive Holy Communion on First Fridays in nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving their sacraments. May divine hearts shall be their safe refuge in this last moment of their life. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us.